It is important for us to honor our word and our promises that we not only make to others or ourselves, but also to God. The kingdom of heaven receives our promise as if it is a promissory note or a kingdom credit card. And as long as we follow through on what we promised, God will honor us. As a result, it is important that we are careful about what we say and what we promise because what we say is enforceable in the realm of the spirit and becomes established in the earth. As we learn about the kingdom currency, I pray that you will ask God to set a guard over your mouth and become more aware of your words, whether spoken out loud or internally. Thank you for joining us once again, and we're gonna jump right into our message. Today, I want to talk to you about the kingdom currency that we call a vow. Genesis 28, 20, and Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set For a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. The vow. A vow is actually the credit system of the kingdom, and that's important to understand. It means that God gives you something or someone gives you something, and what you are exchanging that thing for, you promise to pay in a time beyond the reception of what you get. It's a vow. It's a promise that you make. It's a part of the kingdom credit system. It's a pledge. It's a kind of covenant or profession. It's an assurance or a guarantee. Um, We talk about our words a binding. And so it's, it's a contract that you're making. And so a vow could be written or it could be this verbal contract or promise or commitment that you make that you must honor. And so a vow, therefore, is legally binding. It's a legally binding spiritual currency. So it's not just legally binding, but it's a legally binding spiritual currency that is ratified in the realm of the spirit. Matthew 16, 19 said, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. In other words, heaven is going to back it up. Heaven is going to ratify it. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed or, or, or released from, from um, the contractual arrangement in heaven. And so the spirit realm actually is the causal realm. So the moment you make a vow, the moment you make a covenant, the moment you make a contract, heaven registers that, and then it puts into motion whatever that consequence is, good or bad, that is is as a result of that, that vow that is made. So the moment you make a vow to God, say for instance, if your church is in a building fund and you say, God, I want to give to the building fund. I don't have the money right now. The moment you make that vow, is the moment God releases blessings, even before you honor what you say, even before you pay what you say you're going to pay. pay. The moment that you make that um, vow, the blessings associated with that vow is released. So failure to pay places us in the category of an extortioner or a thief. And there was a biblical warning about this. Ecclesiastes 6, 4 to 6 says, For he cometh in with vanity and departeth in darkness, and his name shall be covered with darkness. Moreover, he hath not seen the sun, nor know anything. This hath more rest than the other. Yea, though he lived a thousand years twice told, yet hath he seen no good, do not all go to one place. The Bible speaks about vows and the positive and negative spiritual impact that these vows will have on the lives. So a vow can serve to bless. It can serve to curse. Vows vows are verbal contracts that can be broken with or sometimes without 
a consequence. Like, say for instance, if you are living in sin and you that's what your lifestyle is and you make vows while you're in sin, then when you get saved, that curse um, associated with the sinful act is broken and you can apply the blood of Jesus Christ against sin, against satanic enforcement of that. So you're making vows, you're in sin, maybe uh, you're part of a gang and you have this contract that you have made with the gang, then you give your heart to the Lord. In that instance, you can break that covenant and then once you apply the blood over that vow that you have made or that covenant that you've made, it is no longer considered um, enforceable. Uh, but if you make a vow, then you would have to honor that vow, whether it's written or verbal. And I, lo I know a lot of people want to wiggle out of vows, but Ecclesiastes 5.67 says, Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be anger at angry at thy voice and destroy the works of thy hands. For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there are also diverse vanities, but fear thou God. And so there are those that have pronounced even vows over their own life in times of anger, in times of confusion, and it's still enforceable in the realm of the spirit. There are some people that are facing things in their lives and it, it's continuously never ending and they're not able to progress and they don't realize that they can ch actually trace it back to something that they have spoken over their lives. Like, I'll never trust anybody again. And, um, uh, you know, this is never going to happen to me. And, you know, I remember a verbal vow that I made in my life. I was young. I probably was about 18 and I thought 40 was old. And I said um, to myself and I said to a couple of friends, oh, when I get 40, I want to die. But when I turned 40, something amazing happened the year before in my 39th year. Um, I all of a sudden was walking out of my office and I just felt weak and felt sick. And I went home, I couldn't get up in the morning and I thought, oh, I gotta drink more water, eat more fresh food, exercise some more. But I got weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. So I went to a doctor in Boca Raton, one of the top doctors in Florida. And um, he said, it's a miracle that you even walked in here. I wanna rush you to the hospital. You need to get a blood transfusion. Your blood is, oh, I think it was uh, three points. It had dropped to three points or five points, I can't remember, and it should be somewhere up there, 12, 13, and mine had dropped to five, between five and three, I can't remember which one it was. I mean, if it's zero, you're dead, but it had dropped all the way down. He said, you can't fly. God forbid if you fly, forget about just being unconscious, you might, might die. And we're trying to figure out, well, what is wrong with my blood? And they couldn't find anything wrong with my blood. So I went home that night and I sat on the edge of my bed, just ready to retire. I was so weak. I didn't feel well at all. And the Holy Spirit whispered in, in my ear, you made a vow to yourself. And I'm trying to figure out what vow. Then he brought to rem my remembrance when I was about 18 years old, where I said I wanted to die when I was 40, because I thought 40 was so old. When I was 39, my body started to manifest um, that vow that I had made. And it was, it was just it, out of ignorance. I want to die when I'm 40, but the spirit realm is the causal realm. And that vow became a contract. It's a promissory note that I made with myself to die. And, um, oh, I, I, I pleaded the blood on it. I reversed it. And then the Holy Spirit gave me wisdom and I did exactly what the, the, the Holy Spirit instructed me to do. And two weeks later, when I went to the doctor, my blood had gone all the way back up to 12. And he said, like, this is a miracle. What happened? And I said, oh, I just used um, um, some prayer and God showed me what was wrong. And he said, well, God needs to show me what's wrong with all my patients. Because if you, you know, your health turned around so quickly and I began to tell him about the power 
of the spoken words, especially as it becomes to vows. The Bible said, whatever you bind on earth, you bound in heaven. The Bible said, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall, shall be established. And one of the things I recognize that even in our personal life, we made these, we make these personal vows and we may not even think that they're, they're vows. You know, when we say, I'll never trust another person for as long as I'll live. I'll never get over this pain. I'm always going to have struggled in my life. I'll never be free from sin. You know, every church I go to, um, someone hurts me. I'll never forgive this person. I'm always broke. And like me, something silly that a teenager would say because you, they, they think that they're uh, 40 is old. I want to die when I'm 40, 39, at 39. My body took that as, a, um, as an instruction and it started breaking down for no apparent reason. And once I um, turned back and I, and, and, and I pre pleaded the blood over it, and I reversed it and I said, it shall not stand, it shall not come to pass. That's when my body started healing itself. And when I went two weeks later, that's when I got a clean bill of health. I uh, am a psychotherapist. I used to have a private practice in Florida and one of my clients was a professional um, a psychiatrist that would come for me for therapy. And we sat down and directly after one of her sessions, she flew back. And on the airplane, she had a heart attack. And, um, you know, they called me. I began to talk to her. And I said, you know, you, you, you obviously made a personal vow. And I shared with her a couple of other things. And she broke down. She said, I've been in therapy. I'm a psychiatrist, but I've been, been in therapy as well. And no one had ever figured this out. I wanted to die when my child turns 16 and my child is 15 years old. And I said, I just wanted to get my child to their 16th birthday. Then life is not worth living. I just want to die. I've been in, been in uh, depression for so long. So we helped her to reverse that personal vow that she made with herself. And her heart was working at 20%. They gave her um, a heart pacer. And then they were able to take the heart pacer back out. And her heart miraculously reversed where she had 80% of the heart pumping like it should. I'm not, a cardi uh, I'm not a cardiologist, but in simple terms, they took the heart pacer out and she regained, it was working at 20%, she regained another 60%, so she didn't need a heart pacer at all. And it's amazing because sometimes we make these covenants with ourselves and we don't even really understand what is going on in the realm of the spirit and why things are happening. One of the things that I want you to pray is a simple prayer. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the doors of my lips. Incline not my heart to any evil thing. The word heart here is my mind. To practice wicked works with man that work work iniquity and let me not eat of their dainties. And so internal dialogue, things that people don't hear you say, only you know that you're thinking those things. Sometimes that becomes a personal vow. And then we wonder why things are happening. You know, when we say, oh, I'm never going to, this is never going to happen and I'm never going to get out of this. And, you know, I'm, I'm so mad I could die and she makes me sick. You make me sick. And the words that we speak is actually affecting our lives. And we have to be careful what we say because this is like your credit card. It's a part of, of, of the heaven's credit system. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. So we need to really plead the blood over those words. We need to pray and break every destructive personal vow that we have made and we continue to make in order to see our lives being blessed. Number two, there's another type of vow. There's the personal vows that you make, but what about the vows that you make in your marriage relationship. And you make these promises. It's a covenant that you make and you make it in front of witnesses, not only in front of God, but in front of witnesses. When we pronounce our vows, we've got witnesses. I do take so-and-so to be my wife or my husband to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for wor worse, for richer, for, for poor, for sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until we are parted. This is my solemn vow. 
And that's what we say. And the officiant would then say, well, you take this woman or this man to be your husband and wife. And then he ratifies it for as long as this man shall live, for as long as this woman shall live. And then they pronounce the benediction, um, whom God has joined together, let no man put asunder. And, you know, you know that those are some serious things you know, to vow that kind of vow. And one of the things that I'm praying over every married couple is that we take those vows seriously and that every year we continue to make that kind of vow in our marriage and to remember um, with the ring that is an eternal ring, those vows that we have, that we have established. And this does not include physical and mental abuse, but working through things and working through the hard times is what it's going to take to keep those marriages together. So a marriage is another kind of vow. Another kind of vow is the promises that you make to people, the promises that you make for your job, the promises that you make to friends. You've got to be able to watch the kinds of uh, covenants or contracts or promises that you're making. And if you make a promise to someone, irrespective of the fact that that person may end up moving out of your life, keep your end of the bargain. It's not, it's not about the person, it's about you. So that's the next thing. These are promises that you make, promises that you make to your children, sink or swim, perish or survive, honor your word. And then finally, there's the promises that we make to God. And usually we make these kinds of vows during times of desperation, when we really want something and we really want God to come through for us. In um, the scriptures, it says, when thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou should not vow than thou should vow and not pay. So, you know, when it comes to us as Christian and churches, I know a lot of people make promises and vows to churches. And it's best that if you cannot honor the vow in the specified period that you say, to go back to your pastor and say, can I have an extension? And he can either give you an extension or he might say, okay, you don't have to pay it. And you want to be able to say that to family, to friends. If you can honor it at this time, you need to go back because it raises a question of your integrity. Judges 11, uh, 30 to I think verse 40, it says, and Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, if thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the door of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them and the Lord delivered them into his hands. He smote them from Arori until thou cometh to Mineth, even 20 cities and unto the plain of the vineyard with a great slaughter, very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. And Jephthah came to Mitzvah unto the house. And behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrets and dance. And she was his only child beside her. He had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass when he saw her that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very little, and thou art one of them that troubled me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. This is um, integrity. And she said unto him, my father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which hath proceeded out of my mouth, for as much as the Lord hath taken vengeance for thee of thy enemies, even the children of Ammon. And she said unto our father, let this thing be done for me. Uh, let me alone two months that I may go up and down upon the mountains and be well my virginity and I and my fellows. And, and he said, go. And he sent her away for two months and she went with her companions and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed, and she knew no man. And it was the custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughters of Jephthah, the Gileadite, four days in the year. And so again, when we make a vow, 
This is like a promissory note in the realm of the spirit. This is like a credit card. When you make a vow to God, God, if you do this, I'll give you this. We see Jacob doing it. We see Jephthah doing it. And many people in the Bible making a vow. If you make the vow and God blesses you and you don't honor your word, it's like spiritual extortion. You're just stealing. So this is like having a credit card that you swipe in the realm of the spirit where you just negotiate with heaven and you say, God, if you, if you do this for me, I'm going to do that for you. And you want to be able to make sure that you honor your vow. Our Father and our God, we thank you for uh, this series that we have been teaching. And I pray that you would bless each individual as we, we learn more about our economic system, our kingdom's economic system. I pray over each individual. I pray that you would bless them. I pray that each individual will be blessed so much so that all of their needs are met so that they have an overflow and they will be used mightily to bankroll kingdom initiatives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. I pray this message was a blessing to you. To all of our partners, thank you so much for all that you continue to do. Not only for giving, but also for following us on social media, for tuning in every week, for your financial support, your prayers, and for allowing us to do life with you in real time as we reach people all over the world. We continue to pray God's richest blessing upon you. We love you. We'll see you the next time. Stay blessed, prosper, and remember, you're unstoppable. The Cindy Trim Ministries app just got even better. Dive into the brand new experience right now by updating or downloading the latest version of the app for free in the Apple or Google Play Store. The dynamic home screen keeps you up to date with the latest empowering articles, sermons, live streaming services, and a weekly arrangement of the most inspiring content available anywhere. Watch on-demand messages and begin leading your empowered life group today. Sign up now and receive your how-to handbook and discussion guides for each message. There's more empowerment at every click. Engage in the latest events hosted by Dr. Trim and find out when she's coming to a city near you. We've even made giving easier than ever before. You can donate now by selecting the Give button inside of the app. After creating your profile, giving will be as simple as putting in an amount and selecting Donate. Download the Cindy Trim Ministries app now and begin your journey of empowerment with us today. Thank you.